Minister. Order, I've called the Honourable David Cunningham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, does the government's online budget calculator use Treasury's forecast inflation rate of 5.9 per cent for 2011, and if not, why not? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, first of all, can I thank the member for drawing the attention to, of the House to the website taxguide.govt.nz where uh, anyone can go and check the impact of the tax and income support changes that were announced in the budget, confirming that virtually all New Zealanders will be better off. It doesn't include factors not directly attributable to the budget, such as falling unemployment rates or indexation of entitlements. These are, however, reflected in the budget forecast, which include uh, creation of 170,000 jobs over the next four years. Mr. Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable David Cunham. Mr Speaker, the question was on notice and was, uh, I think you'd agree, a very straight question, and it's really a yes or no answer, uh, Mr Speaker, and it appears that what the Minister was trying to say was no, it does not, but I seek your assistance on clarifying the, that matter. I think the member makes a fair point. The question was a very straightforward question. We heard a lot of answer that didn't actually relate to the question, and I'm not sure at the end when we heard what wasn't included in it whether we, did, we didn't actually hear whether that inflation forecast was or not. I think the Minister should answer that. It's on notice. Point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Speaker, this has become a habit from that member to simply raise spurious points of order if he doesn't get the answer he wants. So no order. One order, five... order. No, no, I've heard enough. No, the member will resume his seat. The question asked was a very straight question. The question asked was, and I will repeat it for the assistance of members, does the government's online budget calculator use the Treasury's forecast inflation rate of 5.9 per cent for 2011? If not, why not? Now, that's a very straightforward question. No politics, and the House does deserve an answer. There's a public interest in that, and the House deserves an answer. Instead of that, the, the, uh, the member was thanked for drawing attention to the, you know, to the website, etc., and that is not the way questions should be answered. Now, at the end of the day, I think the member draws a conclusion that from the Minister's answer maybe it's not, uh, does not take account of that uh, forecast inflation rate. But the public should know for certain and not have to draw a conclusion about it. And where, quite, where straight questions are asked, this House, deserve, this House and the public deserves an answer. The Honourable Bill English. Point of order, the Honourable Cherry Brown. Mr English. Speaker, the Minister of Finance did give a straight answer. Uh, and I point you to Speaker's ruling 1578, which makes it very clear that a member cannot insist on a yes or no answer. Now, if you've ruled that that no longer applies, then we should be told formally. Order. Again, I just would ask a little sense to be applied to Speaker's rulings and standing orders, where a matter is clearly in the public interest, and it's not that difficult. The Minister of Finance is responsible. This is a matter directly the responsibility of the Minister of Finance. It's not some peripheral thing. And I think the House deserves to know the information, whether or not that's included in the, in the, the calculators, uh, calculation results. And it's not a difficult matter. And it's, it's just trifling with the House to avoid answering it. And I ask the Minister, the Honourable Bill English, to answer. Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Peter Dunn. Speaker, can I just take the point you've just ruled on one step further by drawing your attention to Speaker's ruling 1581, because it seems to me that in the ruling you've just made, which would be of benefit to the House, you are in effect overturning 1581. Now, I raise that, sir, because for many years speakers have used the phrase the Minister is just required to address the question in response to complaints about whether or not an answer has been properly given. So I think it would be very important for you to indicate whether, in fact, that provision still prevails or you are, in fact, ruling in a way that sets a new precedent in respect of that, because that would be a benefit to all members of the House to know whether that change was being made. I appreciate the Honourable Member's point, and I have made it very clear that uh uh, my uh, interpretation of Standing Order 377 is very simple. The Standing Order says that an answer that seeks to address the question must be given if it can be given consistently with the public interest. To me, the most crucial parts of that Standing Order are that an answer must be given so long as it can be given consistently with the public interest 
and the nature of that answer should be if there's any doubt about the question asked, and there are many questions where it's hard to work out exactly what's being asked, should address the question as best the Minister can. But there is no, in my view, no doubt about what that standing order means, and that's why it's in my view that the responsibility of the Minister to answer a fair question. I think where there are some questions that are asked where a member may be trying to get a yes-no answer on something that's not absolutely the Minister's direct responsibility, not on notice, uh, but where a question is on notice, right in the heart. I mean, this calculator is part of the Minister's absolutely, you know, as part of the budget uh, documentation. It's, by the, it's put in place by the department for which this Minister is directly responsible. There can be no doubt that this is a matter that that, that, uh, that standing order should intend, should be answered. And that's why I'm asking the Minister to answer it. Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I regret that I took the time to explain to the House what the calculator does do. Uh, in fact, what I'd said Order. was that the calculator shows the impact of the tax and income support changes announced in the budget. That's what it shows. It does not include factors that are not directly attributable to the budget, and that is the answer. Point of order, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, I appreciate uh, your efforts to and join the Minister to answer that question on notice, and it was, as you say, a pretty straightforward question. And, uh, Mr Speaker, the dilemma that I think the House has, that even after a second uh, try at that, the Minister's answer is still quite indistinct, because it's in fact circular, sir. Uh, he does not define what elements were, quote, within the budget and what elements were not, and therefore has not made clear to the House whether the 5.9 per cent inflation forecast, which appears on page 63 of the Budget Economic and Financial Update, uh, which is an absolutely crucial variable... Order. I think the Member's uh, made his point clear, and I will try again. I will ask the Minister of Finance, and I'm being deadly serious here, because this is absolutely the Minister's responsibility. The figure being referred to in the question, it's claimed in the question, I presume it's been validated, it is in the Treasury documentation associated with the budget. So it is a matter absolute the heart of the Minister's responsibilities. And in my view, should not be, the House should not be treated in a way where the Minister... I mean, the Minister can refuse to answer the question if he believes it's not in the public interest, but I'd be highly surprised if refusing to answer that question is the public not in the public interest. I'm asking once more, and I'm deadly serious, I'm asking the Minister not to trifle with the House, I expect the question on notice to be answered. The Honourable Bill English. Order. Speaker. Order. Order. And I say to those members who have interjected, they'll cease that immediately. This is clearly a fairly testing time in this House. I don't think anyone's ever seen this done before. And I expect members to show a little respect to this place. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, the calculator shows the impact of tax and income support changes announced in Budget 2010. It does not include factors not directly attributable to the budget, such as price movements. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, I, I, I sincerely... Is this a supplementary question? Uh, no, sir, this is a point of order, sir. Point of order, the Honourable David I sincerely Cunliffe. appreciate your efforts, sir, but the Minister has again given a circular answer... In oh, order, such... order, no, order, order... Order on this occasion, the Minister did say that it does not include price movements, which is another of saying it does not include inflation. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, having established then that the 5.9% inflation rate forecast by the Treasury on page 63 of the Budget and Economic Financial Update is not included in the public benefit uh, calculator on his website. How can the Minister say to New Zealanders that they can go to that website and calculate whether they personally will be better off if it in fact ignores the full effect of inflation? The Honourable Bill Because Mr Speaker, the, the member is suggesting a stupid calculation and we did not set up the calculator uh, for stupid calculations. What he has left out, if, 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 if we want to work out the impact on wages over time, then you might include an inflation rate, but you would also include projected wage increases. In the budget, in the, budget the projected wage increases exceed projected inflation. And the budget also shows 
170,000 new jobs.